Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another beginner's getting started guide for EVE Echoes, where I go around filling in the holes left by the tutorial. If you haven't already done the tutorial, this video won't make much sense to head to encounters, go to tutorials, and complete all of these missions. Done it? Good. Let's jump right in. Today I wanted to cover the basics of offensive combat, that is to say that I'm going to talk about guns and gunnery, I am not going to talk about armour, protection and repairing your ship, that is something I will cover in a second video called tanking. Now in this particular one the reason I'm talking about combat is ultimately because I want to showcase ratting to you guys. Don't worry, you haven't fallen through a wormhole into an alternative dimension where we're all cats. Ratting is the slang term for going out to combat anomalies and killing pirate NPCs for both the bounty and the loot. We'll go more into that later. Right, so the first two things you're going to need to do are obviously set up your ship and set up your, uh, your skills for this. So first things first, let's go through to fitting, and you'll see here why I have gone for the Minmatar Thrasher. I like Minmatar just because I love how the ships look. A lot of their ships have great combat potential to them, especially things like their, uh, just their destroyers and frigates. I love some of their destroyers and frigates. Some of those are, to me, the best in the game for PvP. What I am going to go over here is the Thrasher. Now the reason I've gone for the Thrasher in this particular example is because of this plus 30% small projectile turret damage. That is huge. In addition to that, I've got additional damage and fall off here from skills, but we'll come to that later. It's more the roll bonus that is the important point on this one. This is a heavy hitting destroyer. Now, of course, going through tutorial, you should have understood the terms of capacitor, that's the orange bar in, uh, going around my ship there, and the difference between low slots and high slots. Now, if you look in the high slots here, you'll see that I have fit three Mark III 280 mm howitzers. Now, Minmatar ships prefer projectile weapons. And you'll see here, again, it says small projectile turret damage. They prefer projectile turrets. Um, we'll cover the differences between the turrets in a moment, but ultimately there are several different types. There are projectile, there are energy, and there are hybrid. There's also missile, they're not technically turrets, but we will cover those in this video. Drones, however, we will not cover. Those are a much more complicated subject that require a video of their own. Now, every turret type tends to come in two types of its own, short range or long range. Now, for Minmatar and projectile turrets, those are, for long range, you have the howitzers, which are artillery. And for short range, you have autocannons, which are short range, like, Gatling guns, basically. And we're going to go over the stats for these. Now, one thing the tutorial doesn't mention is that if you actually hold down on one of these items, it brings up the basic info page. Now, damage type is something we're going to cover much more in tanking, but just to give you a basic rundown here, from left to right, that is electromagnetic, also called EM. The red one is thermal. The white one is kinetic. And the orange one is explosive. And as I said, we'll cover that much more in the tanking video. So don't worry too much about it now, but just understand that different weapons have different profiles. Now, looking at the basic info stats, we're going to run through these quickly. Volume is just how much space it takes up. Power grid requirement is how much of your capacitor it requires to operate. And then the damage modifier is ultimately the size of the weapon. The, bi the bigger this number, the, the bigger the gun is, so to speak. This is kind of how you work out true damage. You take the single hit damage there at the bottom, 351, multiply it out by the damage modifier, and that kind of gives you true damage under, uh, under perfect situations, which you're never really going to have. Duration. Whenever you activate a gun or anything in EVE, you'll know that it's got that little light that fills up around the side. That is the duration of the activation, one cycle. In the case of a howitzer, that is each shot, so you can kind of think of duration as reload. Now, the important ones that I want to talk about here are optimal range, accuracy, fall off, and tracking speed. These aren't quite as obvious as you might expect, but we're going to go into them now. Optimal range. It is the range at which the gun is most effective. Rather, this is the maximum range at which the gun is most effective. At 8.86 kilometers or closer, this gun is going to be doing the most damage per hit. Accuracy fall off is 14.44 kilometers. That can kind of be considered to be a maximum range. It's not really. Um, the first damage, uh, first accuracy fall off, that 14.44, is its 50% uh, accuracy. At 14.44 kilometers, this howitzer will have 50% accuracy. At twice that, so 28.88, it will have 0% accuracy. It will miss 100% of the time. I kind of like to think of accuracy fall-off as kind of 
um, your maximum range, it's not. You can shoot from beyond that and you'll see it in effect later. Um, but once you're within that, you're going to be hitting more often. Um, and if you're within optimal range, you'll be doing more damage. Now, of course, you can sit there and say, well, okay, if the optimal range is 8.86 kilometers, why don't I just get up to zero kilometers, you know, one kilometer away orbit? That's tracking speed. Now, ultimately, your turrets are on swivel points, if you imagine, um, and the faster that the enemy ship is moving relative to yours, the faster your turrets have to be able to swivel in order to track their target. Now, here you can see that the howitzer's 122 tracking speed is actually fairly low which means it's going to struggle against fast moving targets. Now, the closer you are to a target, the faster they are moving relative to you. If you orbit someone at one kilometer away and they're orbiting you, you'll see how fast you kind of dance around each other. If you're orbiting at a much larger distance, it is a slower orbit um, and thus th those turrets don't have to track quite as much. Uh, go with a howitzer. You want to be orbiting at about eight kilometers and you'll see me do that later on in this video. Now, looking at the other weapon types for uh, the other auto cannons, sorry, the other projectile turrets here, if we go down to a Mark 1 200mm auto cannon, um, again, we can go past the damage types and basic info. What we're focusing on here is the optimal range, accuracy fall off, and tracking speed. Now, you'll see that a standard auto cannon, it is shorter range, it's 1.2 kilometers. Its accuracy fall off is also much lower at 5.16, and its tracking speed is significantly higher to compensate for this. An autocannon is designed for being up close, personal, and shooting them in the face. Because of this, the single hit damage is a little bit lower, but the duration is also much faster. This means it's going to be firing less damaging shots, but much more frequently, meaning that autocannons are great for getting up close and personal and really hitting them where it hurts. The thing that I want to mention here is there is no point having autocannons and howitzers on the same ship if you're using something like a frigate or a destroyer where you've got limited guns. Now, why is that? It, it should be fairly simple from what I've said, but ultimately, if you've got autocannons and howitzers on your ship, you come up against one simple problem. If you are in the optimal range for your autocannons, that nice and close 1.2 kilometers, you're going to be missing with your uh, howitzers because the howitzers have that very slow tracking speed. They're not going to be able to keep up with a target that is that close to them. On the other hand, if you're at your howitzers, optimal range then the howitzer's optimal range was like eight kilometers that's beyond the accuracy fall off of these autocannons the autocannon is going to be missing all the time there is no point equipping to uh, a long range and a short range weapon or you're just going to be missing your targets you're running at 50 percent effectiveness anyway that's projectile weapons i don't want to focus solely on projectile weapons obviously the thrasher as i said small projectile turret damage is the big bonus so i want to have it equipped with projectile turrets but you might be using an amar ship or a caldari or a galente now amar ships tend to use energy turrets do check that little i button on whatever particular destroyer you want to use for its any preferences it has but that small button ultimately will tell you what you're looking for amar tend to focus on energy um galente and Minmat uh, galente and caldari sorry tend to focus on either uh, rail guns which are hybrid or on missiles now when you look at something like an energy turret you'll see that the statistics oh, cracky open you'll see the statistics and how it's laid out is pretty much the same it's got a couple of differences things like activation cost and that but ultimately it's still optimal range accuracy fall off and tracking speed and the same is true for rail guns I'm not going to get too much into this, but if we have a look at missiles, um, you'll see that these are very different. They do not have tracking speed. They do not even have a, an optimal range or an accuracy fall off. Instead, they have missile range. Now, missile range should be considered the absolute maximum it can hit under optimal circumstances. Obviously, with ships orbiting, you're never going to have just a straight shot. The missile is going to have to curve a little bit. That does add to the distance. So here you can see this particular missile has a 4.5 kilometer range. You're actually going to want to be around closer to four kilometers simply because anything beyond that um, and, and you run the chance of missing just thanks to those curves. Now, instead of tracking, you have explosion velocity and explosion radius. Ultimately, these are kind of how you know whether you're hitting big ships or little ships. Basically, a smaller explosion velocity and a smaller explosion radius does more damage and hits more effectively against faster moving smaller targets. Whereas a higher explosion velocity and a higher explosion radius is going to hit better against slow moving um, and is going to deal more damage against larger ships. And ultimately, that can be described by the final word. A missile launcher rocket is better against small ships like destroyers and frigates, whereas missile launcher missile or missile launcher standard um, are going to be better against the bigger ships. 
that kind of covers what I want to say with missiles. So in this case, as I said, you want to be keeping your guns as close to each other as possible. If not necessarily the same mark, like all these three are Mark III, I could have Mark I and Mark V, as long as they're similar range and accuracy fall off. That's the main point. So you've got a cool ship, you've got it fitted out with some awesome guns, what skills are you going to need? Well, <laughs> I actually found out recently that up here in the top right, if you tap this little icon, it takes you to the full skill tree, which makes it much easier to find things. If we go to weapon technology, again, this will depend on what type of turrets you're using. If you're using energy turrets, go for energy. Hybrid if you're using uh, rail guns. Projectile turrets if, like me, you're using Mimitar, uh, autocannons and howitzers. Or missiles if you're using missile pods. That should be self-explanatory, and they're all very similarly named. Now, the first one to start with is obviously small projectile turret operation. Every level of this increases your turret damage, your tracking speed, and the optimal range. It just makes you better with those turrets. Once you've got small projectile turret operation, or small energy turret operation, or small hybrid turret operation to level 5, you can then go into advanced, which just continues that thread. Um, you'll see here you've got the different levels that continues that thread of extra damage extra tracking speed and extra optimal range also once it hits uh, level four and upwards you'll see it adds uh, gyro stabilizer duration don't worry too much about that i'll go in that in an advanced fitting tutorial later on um, and then finally once you've got that to level five you can go into the uh, expert so you kind of have the standard the advanced and the expert which is kind of like going level one to five level six to ten and then level eleven to fifteen Secondarily, small projectile turret upgrade is always nice to have as well, as it kind of does similar sort of stuff. It's simple projectile turret damage increase. Um, the reason that you have that as two separate trees is that these, uh, the small projectile turret upgrades can just be trained that little bit faster. Don't worry about medium, those are going to be things that we look at when we go into things like uh, cruisers um, and battleships, because those require larger turrets. Uh, it's the different size slots. Ultimately, on a frigate and a destroyer, you are only going to have small size uh, high slots. And so that's basically what you're going to be looking for. Um, either small projectile turret operation and small projectile turret upgrade or hybrid or energy or missiles or whichever ones you want. Train those up. Those are just going to help you deal more damage. Right, so there you are. You now have your ship all fitted out to deal uh, some nice damage in combat and you've got your skills there to help set you up as well. Obviously, it's worth having some, like, you know, armor modifiers and shielding things and that. I will go over that more in the tanking video, I promise. I know I'm being pretty vague on it now, but having just the basic shield or basic armor repairer on right now will do the job for you just to get you started. What we're going to do now is, of course, we're going to undock, we're going to go looking for some anomalies, and then we're going to blow some pirates up. So bear with me while I go and find a nice, cool-looking anomaly for us, and we'll continue from there. Well, here I am now, just having completed a jump to Utafal. Now, in this particular section, you'll see if I go down to Signal here in the overview, that I've got small anomalies, large anomalies, medium anomalies, and some of them have different numbers. Now, small and large depends on the, how many ships are in that particular area, um, and the number is the difficulty. So I'm actually going to take a serious risk here and go for this Sanchez Small Anomaly 4 and warp to it. While I'm warping, just want to discuss the heads-up display at the bottom of the screen here. You can see the arrow that represents the direction your ship's facing. The green bar on the right-hand side is your capacitor, which of course goes down the more you're using it. Then you've got three bars on the left. Those are going from middle outwards. The white bar is structure, the light blue is armor, and the darker blue is shields. Obviously, you have to go through shields to get to armor, armor to get to structure, and when structure is gone, that is your shield popped. Obviously, different weapon types, as we saw earlier, and I will go into this more detail later, different weapon types, as we saw earlier, will go through shields and armor at different rates. But here we are at our anomaly. So if I now go to nearby, you can see the ships nearby. We're going to lock onto those and start firing. Ultimately, my aim here is just to showcase as well that when it comes to orbit, I don't just want to orbit at like 500 kilometers. If I, uh, five kilometers, sorry, if I hold down on orbit, I get this little... Thing here that I can move in and out. I want to be orbiting at about eight or nine kilometers in this particular ship, so that's what I'm going to set it as. The uh, howitzers there have already blown that particular ship out of the sky, so let's go to the Senti Coercer, lock onto that one there. Again, once we're locked onto it, if we go to orbit and hold that down, I want to be orbiting at eight or nine kilometers because that's where my weapons are best and I'm further range from him. I'm going to open fire with all of my howitzers, and you'll watch now, bang, down goes his shield and armor, you can see this in the top right, and when those fire again, 
It takes a bit of time for them to travel to the target, but that shield and that structure is almost gone. And one more hit should take him out of the sky. Here it comes. There he goes. That's him dead as well. So finally now we open that overview and look for that third one. Now I'm fully expecting a whole load more to turn up after this. The great thing about using a thrasher that has been hit fitted with auto cannons is I don't really have to orbit all that far to get to them. At 13 kilometers, I'm gonna be missing a few of my shots, but ultimately I can do a decent amount of damage, as you can see there. It also means I can stay at a decent distance from my opponents. Here I'm actually going to orbit and I'm just going to hit standard orbit because I'm going to ultimately try and move as close as I can into this group of enemies. I'm going to open fire on that crucifier there and you'll see that my the shots at the moment aren't doing much damage simply because of distance and the fact that I'm beyond that optimal range that we discussed. But now that I'm getting close to that optimal range, I'm down to 13 kilometers away now, I'm going to be dealing much more damage and that crucifier is out of the sky. Let's lock on to that coercer. Again, we are going to set the orbit in this one to about eight kilometers away. And then we're going to open fire with all three of my turrets. You can see again at the distance, there goes his shields. Looking here in the top right, um, I'm hitting his armor for a little bit of damage. As I get closer, I'll deal more and more damage. You see now I get into that range and bam, down goes his armor and there goes his structure. He's gone as well. As I get closer and closer to that optimal range, not the destroyer wreck, sorry. Want to lock on to the center coercer there. I'm going to orbit that guy and we are going to hit with as all of my uh, howitzers onto him as well. Now you'll see in this particular case, they've not even got through my shields because I'm keeping enough range from them that I can hit, um, but it's doing enough damage to them to destroy them. Now also, as a key point, watch what happens when one of them gets destroyed. You may have spotted it already on the screen, but we're just going to keep an eye out around about where the mining goes. Just above uh, where the howitzer icons here in the bottom. Keep watching as I start firing on this guy. You can see I'm glancing off and missing because I'm at 24 kilometers. As I get closer towards my optimum range and within my damage fall off, I'm gonna be hitting more frequently and dealing better damage. There we go, there goes most of his armor. He's about to go in this next volley. So watch here in the bottom right of the screen. There we are, 15,000 extra isk will be issued in the next bounty. Ultimately, you get the straight up money there just for blowing these guys out of the air. So this is a great way, if you are combat ready, to make a decent bit of isk, just blowing up pirates. I like to do this. Ultimately, my old job in EVE used to be protecting uh, miners in the corporation. I would have my hurricane or whatever ship I was piloting at the time, and I'd sit there in the asteroid belt with some friendly miners doing their work, and my job was just to shoot down anything unfriendly that came close. Now, all very well and good, but if I've got no friends online, what do I do? Simple. Um, you, you come out here and you go ratting. You just shoot pirates, you destroy them for the bounty. You see I'm earning seven to 14,000, 15,000 for that particular one. For every time I destroy one of these, and of course they are leaving wrecks too, which is a key point. Let's shoot this guy. He should be just about within range because this guy should go down fairly quickly. Yeah, there we go. What a punch to the face that is. Bang, he is wrecked. All right, so let's open up that overview. The final thing to do is to loot. When you've destroyed pirates, of course, it's worth going up to their hold and looting them for parts. That said, only ever loot something that is yours. If you're not convinced that you looted it, don't try it. If you see cargo containers or wrecks drifting through high security space, do not loot them just for the sheer heck of it, as the space police don't like that, and that is an easy way to lose your ship. Right, and here we are, just as an example of what this particular one has dropped. I've got a Mars ship debris, a, a Mark III small focused beam pulser, and a Mark III reactive shield hardener. Awesome. I can loot those. I can use any of those particular parts myself if I want to. Or, of course, I can go back and sell those on the market. Well, there we go, folks. That just about wraps up everything I wanted to say about basic gunnery and about ratting. Hopefully this gets you started in a nice lucrative career of going hunting pirates uh, for bounties and loot. And just let me know how you get on. I will be back soon with a video regarding um, tanking. That's uh, things like armor and shields. So do keep an eye on this channel uh, for that one. Like this video, hit subscribe to be notified when that particular video goes live. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.